Hi everybody, it's Carol Salter here. Um, finally getting around to doing a, a pod podcast uh, from Gristle's Revenge. The first chapter is what I plan to do. Remember, you can subscribe to my channel uh, by clicking like, subscribe, and the bell icon will let you know uh, when I do another podcast. Before I start reading chapter one, um, Gristle's Revenge, things have changed a bit since I wrote the book in 2018. So please be aware um, if it's slightly different to how things are in 2022. So um, without further ado, let's get on with this chapter. First chapter in the book to see if you like to buy the second book in the trilogy. As you can see, they're all behind me up there. Here we go. Chapter one, Kidnapped. Purity Springfield lagged behind her mother, Shine, who was on another of her shiny gathering sprees. She was bored. Bored, bored, bored. So bored, she'd started listening to those annoying parrots overhead prattling on about their leader, the green goddess. Anything was better than remembering how bored she was. Her back was aching between her shoulder blades again too, where the segments of her adult wings were due to sprout. The fact she couldn't reach the spot to rub it better made it all the more intolerable. If one more person comes up to me and asks me how I am or when my wings are going to sprout, I swear I'll tell them where to shove their wings, she resolved. Purity hated looking like a pathetic ladybug. Why can't my primary feathers have grown already? I want to do more than hover above the ground like some flying beetle. Is it too much to ask? She glared over her shoulder at her infantile winglets, sighing for the hundredth time that day, ignoring her beautiful sky blue hair, which hung in long tresses down to her waist, a perfect match for her wide blue eyes. They're taking too long to open. Her father had told her over and over that this was the result of her dual heritage and they would be even more spectacular and exciting because of it. That's my dad. Always the optimist, she thought grudgingly. Her father's wise words didn't help today. She squinted at the two titchy pink wings she'd had since her walnut shell birth. They looked so out of proportion to her growing teenage body, though her mother said they were still beautiful. Mothers always say that, she muttered. Did you say something, dear? mumbled Shine, head deep inside a council litter bin, reaching for an empty custard tart case in the bottom. No, Mum! fibbed Purity, crossing her fingers behind her back and praying to Mother Gaia that her nose wouldn't grow as long as Pinocchio's. The boat in Paul Cafe was in better shape these days. It was unrecognisable from the time before when Gristle, the evil Heathwitch, had left it a mass of seething lava. The SPRAT, the serious property requiring action team had toiled 24 7 to restore and regenerate the place to its former glory they'd worked from descriptions taken of the place in the 60s the pool had been renewed till the water sparkled the buildings rebuilt and repainted to their previous specifications the whole site had been improved and invigorated receiving more custom as a result Already, humans were thinking they imagined the volcano thingy in the pool, despite photographic evidence to the contrary. A number of folk, responsibly bewitched to forget, were disregarding any mention of it, saying, hasn't that nice man from Scotland done a sterling job? Local mortals watched in their thousands as the multi-millionaire entrepreneur came to Ramsgate supposedly to revamp and rebrand the place. The episode wasn't unlike Margate Pier, which a migrating sea serpent demolished in 1986 and everyone blamed on a hurricane. True, the hurricane had interfered with its sonar, causing it to veer off course into the pier, but it was the sea beast which levelled it. 
the number of times the SPRAT rebuilt it in the dead of night, only to have humans damage it again a few days later. In the end, they let the mortals have their way, after one of the team was nearly blown up whilst lugging the last of the timbers back. Shine was face down in the litter bin when Purity experienced a strange repellent sensation. It felt like something thick and greasy sliding down both her arms, pinning them to her sides. She shivered. Someone couldn't be walking over her grave because fortunately fairies don't have graves, returning instead to the ether from whence they came. But Purity had overheard mortals saying the phrase, and it fitted her feeling perfectly. Unsettled by the feeling, she called out to Shine. Mum, come on, I'm getting cold, she sighed. Another fib. I'll go straight to the Neef realm if I'm not careful. She looked at her mother's petite feet, dangling upside down in the air like some strange blue shoe plant. Just a moment, dear, answered Shine, her soft, sultry voice echoing from the depths of the waste container. There's a lovely Chinese takeaway tin in here and ours is starting to wear at the edges. The feeling of greasiness increased. Purity wrapped her arms around her body to reduce her shivers. Shine jumped, banging her head on the inside of the bin when she heard her daughter's terrified scream. She emerged covered in litter, appalled at the horrific sight which greeted her. Her captivating daughter was screaming and there, wrapped like a vice around Purity's beautiful slim waist, were the most disgusting pair of skinny red hands she'd ever seen. They came complete with warty, knobbly fingers and the filthiest grey curling fingernails. Shine stared in terror as the revolting hands began dragging her precious child towards the gaping black hole from whence they came. Shine flew to her daughter's side, grabbing Purity's arms, she wrapped her own around them and pulled. Purity in turn grabbed her mother. Mummy, she wailed, her eyes wide with terror. Help me, save me. Her terror was infectious. Shine pulled for all she was worth. But while Purity was strong for a fairy, Shine had never been strong. She was no match for the dreadful thing beyond the darkness which was hauling purity into its dark chasm. The creature was unrecognisable, but she knew it was far too powerful for her pitiful efforts. Her child was disappearing in front of her eyes and she was unable to hang on much longer. Unwilling to accept what was happening, for misery lay in that direction. Shine tried in those few vital seconds to reassure her daughter, regardless of the helplessness she felt inside. Don't worry, darling, Shine answered, attempting to sound calm, though in truth she was petrified because she felt her grip falter. We'll find you, wherever you are. Purity started to cry. She realised her mother's strength was failing. The hold on her from the unknown attacker increased. Purity was wrenched away from the only life she'd ever known, disappearing from her mother's grasp with a loud, undignified pop. The dimensions settled back into their usual positions and Shine collapsed on the floor, weeping. My baby, my life and love, gone forever, she sobbed, tears cascading down her soft pale cheeks, soaking into the dry ground beneath. Oof. That's chapter one. You need to buy a copy if you would like to know more. Meanwhile, can I wish everybody a very happy Christmas. Please stay well and safe. And look out for my podcasts in the new year. Until then, goodbye.